But Triple H had mentioned like this first day thinking when it comes to uh, what he's doing. And it made me wonder like the hardcore, hardcore WWE audience, they're going to watch no matter who's in charge, whether it's Vince or Triple H. Like they don't really care. They're just going to watch. It's consistent programming for them. And they watch every week, Raw, SmackDown, maybe even NXT. So Triple H has to cater to those folks. Like he can't change it up too much and upset that apple cart. But at the same time, he knows that there's new audience out there to be had. AEW has proven this, right? AEW has proven that there is a non-WWE audience out there who desperately wanted to watch wrestling. Now, I don't know how many of those people Triple H can get back, or maybe these there are some fringe folks out there as well. But how long do you think the fan base is going to give Triple H in order to make some of these changes that they're kind of waiting for? Like, I know a lot of people who are not major WWE watchers, and this is why I wanted to ask you the question, because I know that you don't watch weekly as well for your own reasons, but how long do you think it'll take people the war they'll go, hmm, we're going to give Triple H this chance to, eh, it's the same thing, and I'm out again? Yeah, that's a good question because you look at, you know, that core audience that WWE has, the ones that are going to watch no matter what. Um, how, you know, what is that number? Is it, uh, you know, is it 1.8 million? Is it is it less than that? You know, it's it's hard to say. They're really trying to grasp the the people that are on the fringes, the, I dare say, lapsed fans, but almost lapsed fans. You know, the people, you're not going to get all these people back from the Attitude Era when 8 million, 10 million people, whatever it was, you know, we're watching both shows. Uh, it's some of people just have just completely moved on with their lives, and they're like, ah, they remember the the stars, but you're not going to get them to sit for a three hour raw every week. So it's a, really it's a question of how do you those fringe people? How many can you get back and really buy into? I think we've seen a little bit of a bump with it. I was, uh, I I kind of not to sound smug, I kind of laughed a little bit because when when he first took over, because people thought there was going to be like. There was a sentiment with media members and also fans. The fans I'm not surprised about because fans should be optimistic because that's what being a sports fan, is being an entertainment fan, that's what we are. We have to be optimistic sure. and because life is a pessimistic fan. I mean, I, even though I'm a Boston sports fan, it's kind of my <laughs> DNA, but it's it, you know it's fun being optimistic as well. But you know, people are like, oh, they thought change was going to happen just like that, and change being like we're back to 1997 again. Everything's right, you know, right. TV 14 and everything's crash TV, you know, and that everything was going to change right away. And those people probably may have not had father-in-laws before, especially people <laughs> that have father-in-laws that have built a, a multi-billion dollar company that's yeah. still alive. And his wife is, his daughter rather is a CEO and, and Paul Levesque is obviously married to that CEO. I mean, you're not going to insult Vince McMahon like that. And again, you have stockholders to worry about Vince McMahon being the primary one. You have a, perception and, and all these things so how long is it going to take it's going to be gradual no matter what he's brought back a few a few of his own guys and, and girls and that's that's good those are easy changes that you can make i think being coherent with storylines and and not making fans feel insulted uh that that's a something that's going to take a little while you know people it, it's it's funny people like they feel like they're trying to it's like um uh, I, I'm a big Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul fan, and that's a big fan theory show. And it's like, oh, I, the WWE Raw, it's like, oh, I can see this change and this change and this change. And people are really looking for things other than just yeah. kind of letting it happen and run its due course. I, uh, you know, the numbers are gonna are, are gonna tell us. It's it's hard to say. I think to me, you give through. You know, I'm willing to give it through the end of the year, to be honest, because you're gonna get some of the cycles with some of the bigger events the smaller uh, premium live events. And, and you're, you're really kind of going to see as someone settles into a, a new job six months in. But, you know, I, to me, what makes it hard to watch is the camera cuts and the zooming. As a viewer, I, I, I just, I can't, I can't watch it. And that makes it hard. I've tried, you know, can great storylines and, and buzz from the outside change that for me? It might, but it is hard when you're just, it's the, you're just trying to, let my brain take in this moment of what I'm seeing. And there's a cut here, a cut here, a cut here, a cut here. It makes it hard to focus. At least for me, I've had younger uh, fans and, and even some of our staff that say that those things don't bother them as much. 
that could be an age thing. And we're talking about kind of learning from different fans and younger fans and what have you. Um, that's one example of how things are changed. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm willing to give it, yeah, through the end of the year and, you know, not going to write off as a failure if it's still the same WWE, but you got to give, you got to give time, the guy time to have his runway and kind of get used to the job and settle in. And, you know, I know he said first day thinking, but I mean, he's been with the company, what, what three decades. So <laughs> I know he's saying that it's really hard to have that when you are in the family and you've also lived it for again, three decades in the same place.